What's going on guys, John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to create an edit events page for our app with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to work on this edit events page. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, in this video, we're going to work on editing these events. So we've got a list of all of our events. In this video, we want to update them or edit them. Now, we've already edited venues, and this is going to be eerily similar to that, but it'll give us a little practice doing these sort of things. That's always good. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code for this video in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist for the rest of the Django videos in this series. All right, so what we need to do is create a web page that we can use to edit our events, right? So every time you create a page with Django, it's always a three-step process. You create a template file, you create a URL, and you create a view in your views.py file. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. Let's head over to our templates events. Let's right click and create a new file. And let's go file, save as, and let's save this as update underscore event dot HTML. That sort of keeps in the theme with the update venue that we did. So instead of edit venue and edit event, we'll label it as update venue and update event, name it anything you want, but uh, that kind of makes sense to me. So I'm gonna click on our update venue page and I'm just gonna copy all of this and paste it over here. Instead of update venue, let's say update event. And the rest of this can pretty much stay the same. So that's easy. So that's our template file. So let's now head over to our urls.py file and let's find the update venue URL. And I'm just gonna copy this and paste it in a second time. But instead of update venue, obviously we want this to be update event. And instead of passing a venue ID, let's pass an event ID. And same thing over here, instead of our update venue view, we want an update event view. And finally, let's call this update dash event instead of update venue. So okay, that looks good. So let's go ahead and save this. Now we just need to create an update underscore event view right there. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's head over to our views.py file. And I'm just going to look through and find our update venue function that we did earlier. I'm just going to copy this. And let's just paste this again and come through here and change it again from venue to event. So uh, update event, we want to pass a request. We also want to pass an event ID. Now we could name these things the same thing. It could be a venue ID, but that doesn't make sense. Like Django doesn't care what you call it, but this is event stuff. So we're going to name the things event ID and event this and event that, right? Just makes sense. So here venue, we want this to be event. And instead of a venue object, we want an event object. And we want to pass that event ID. And for the form, we want to use our event form. We looked at that in the last video. And the instance is going to be event. Now, the real tricky part in this is not missing any of these venue things, right? So, da, da, da. and when we redirect, we don't want to redirect to list venues. We want to redirect to, let's look at our urls.py file. Uh, probably list events. This is the page that lists all of our events. So after we edit one of the events, we want to redirect to the page that lists all the events. So that is list dash events. So we can paste that in there. Almost done. Now we got request. We want this to point to update underscore event, that page we just created. And we don't want to pass venue and venue. We want to pass event and event. Though, really, are we even using those? I'm not sure. Maybe not. So, okay, that looks good. Okay, I think we're good to go here. Now, we need to head over to our list events page. So, event list.html. And let's come down here and at the bottom here, let's add a link to each of the events that you can click on that will go to you know, the page to edit it. And to do that, I'm going to head over to get bootstrap real quick. So let's go get bootstrap.com, click on docs, come down here to components, and find card because you remember, uh, let's see on our events page, this boxy thing, that's a card, right? Actually, let's refresh this. Okay, so 
this is the card the way it is before we've changed it, right? This is a, a bootstrap card. I wanna add a little thing down here, one of these like sort of gray bars at the bottom and put our link there. You can do it any way you want, but that kind of seems cool to me. So I'm gonna come over here, click on components, click on card and scroll through here till we find what we want. Uh, this is what we have so far. But if we scroll down a bit, okay, this one has a bottom one. So if we look at this, we see this div class card dash footer. So we could just copy this and bring it over to our code. And then down here, probably right about here, this is our event underscore list.html page. This, you know, adds all of the events. Here's the card, right? That, but down at the bottom, uh, probably right there, let's go up date event. So let's save this, reload it, see how that looks, if we put it in the right spot, and we did. There we go. And that's kind of nice. We could leave it like this, or maybe we want to make this into a button. I kind of leave that to you, but I think I'm going to change it into a button just because I think that'd be cool. So let's make this into a link, first of all, href equals, and then like that. So if we save this and hit reload, it will just sort of look like a link, right? It doesn't actually go anywhere yet. So to have a point somewhere, let's head back over to our, well, let's look at the website. If we click on venues, right, we have this button here that updates the venue. So we can copy this link and just modify it. So this is our list underscore venues page. So let's find that. So that would be venues.html maybe. Yeah, right here. And here is that link. So I'm just gonna copy this whole thing. See, there's our update link. So I'm gonna copy this bring it over to our event list. And instead of this, I'm going to paste that in. But of course, instead of update venue, we want this to be update event. And instead of the venue ID, we want it to be the event ID. And all of this should already work from the code we did earlier, see event dot stuff, event dot stuff. So we're already adding event right here to this page. So that means we can access that event dot ID on this page. So okay, that looks Good, I think if we save this, head back over here and reload it, this might just be finished. So, okay, there's our button. I think that looks kind of good as a button. So, so if we come down here, we see a test event. Let's go ahead and update that. And test event at city park. So we edit this guy and we click update. Boom, it redirects back to our events page, which is what we want. And now it says test event at city park. And it looks like it worked. This is a test event. Jane Elder is the only one that's going. So let's put also John Elder going. Update again, come down here. Ah, look at that, Jane and John Elder both going. Very cool. And that's all there is to it. So yeah, this was a kind of cheap video because we already did all of this stuff for the venues and all we had to really do is copy and paste the stuff from the venues, tweak it a little bit and then make it work for the events. But still, you know, valid practice. You know, it's always good to practice these things over a couple of times. And also don't knock copying and pasting. That's hard to do. Like there was a lot of things we had to change with from venue to event. If we would have missed just one of them, this whole thing would have broke down. So be careful when you're doing something like that. I don't like to usually do that. I usually would just write the code again. But, you know, I don't know. We're in a hurry today, let's say. And so we just copied and pasted and it worked out fine. So that's how you create an update event function for a little app here and uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on memberships. You pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.